Hello everyone, this is Rock Fallen, and welcome to a quick circuitry tutorial. Um, this is a design that was originally built by Gepwin. It is a belt throughput graph um, that gives you an up-to-date reading on how many items are passing over your uh, belt every second. Um, I've made some modifications here and uh, some tweaks to make it work a little bit better for us, so uh, I will have a quick tutorial here on how it works in a moment. If the only reason you're here is to get the blueprint itself, that's great. There are a couple of quick things I want to cover before you leave because otherwise it's not going to work correctly. So, uh, the first thing you need to know is this box right here, this constant combinator. When you first set down this blueprint, you need to come in here after it's completely set up and turn this on and then turn it back off. This 1R signal is a reset signal. If you don't send that reset signal through this green line right here, this graph will never move. It'll just blink at you. So, that is the most important thing. Once you've done that, there's this con constant combinator over here, which tells it what kind of belt it's using. All of these should be set to zero, except for the one that is the type of belt you've got this combinator here connected to. So you can see here we've got this red belt reading into this machine, so we've told it we have one red belt connected. This also can be used for additional math. So for instance, if you want to use an average, you could do something like this, and have two of those going, and then you could set this to 2, and it would still give you the right number. So that covers the basics. You are now set to use this blueprint. If you want to stick around, there's going to be a quick tutorial here on how all the circuitry works, and hopefully you can utilize this blueprint in your own worlds. I'm glad to see you're still here, so we're going to move on with the tutorial here on how this thing works. Um, it is a little bit complicated, so uh, if you get a little bit lost, that's fine. Just leave comments in the comment section down below, and I will answer any questions that you have. Um, we're not going to cover this circuit over here, because all this circuit over here does is just vary the number of arms that are putting items on the belt, so that we get a varied amount here, so that the graph continues to change. So, um, I will go over the basics of how this works. The most important first part is this piece right here, where it's connected to the belt. This has to be set to read belt contents, but not enable disable, because that'll stop the belt. Just set it to read belt contents, and set it to pulse, which means it sends out a signal every one tick, rather than hold, which sends out a continuous signal. So, we take that one signal per tick, and we run it through this arithmetic combinator that says, each thing that goes through, multiply it by one and output i. So, we could have a variable uh, number of items here, we could have, you know, uh, copper and iron ores on the same belt, and this would count up all of them rather than just counting one or the other, and it will turn any signal into I. So that way we're just working with an I signal. Up here, we've got a T equals 1 signal going into a T less than 60 output T input count, which gives you a timer. So you can see here on the output in the bottom right corner there, Every time T gets up to 60, it starts over, and because this one T is getting looped back on itself, it's going to keep counting up and then restarting, and counting up and restarting. That uh, T signal also goes into this machine that says if T equals 60, I'll put an R. So every 60 ticks, or every one second, it throws a reset signal like this box, which I showed you earlier, which resets the whole system at the beginning. This throws a reset signal in there, which tells it to push everything forward one tick, which is why you have to use this box at the beginning to start it off, because otherwise it won't ever go anywhere. So, going back here for a second, we take the I signal, and we take the T signal, and we throw them both into this machine. This machine says if T is less than 60, output I, so that way it only outputs I until the timer goes off, and then it sets the I back to zero. So then we take it over here and we go i times 10 so that we can uh, get a percentage base for the graph here. Since the graph is actually 11 lights in length, um, the last one is set to 0. Well, actually it's set to negative 1, so um, anything greater than negative 1 means it'll be lit. So the bottom row is always lit up, um, but when it gets down that low it's just a, a red line because the belt is empty, which you'll see here in just a moment. So you can see the belt is empty, and you get just those lights along the bottom, which tells you that you have a problem. So, uh, going back here a second, we've got this I times 10 signal, and we'll put it into this machine, which I'll come back to in a moment. Here, I've split out the other part of our uh, setup. We've got our belt inputs. So we've, we're telling it we're putting in one red belt's worth of um, I signal, basically. 
Um, each of these machines is set up to multiply however many belts it's feeding in by the number of items per belt. So this belt gives you 26.67 items per second. So this rounds down and it does the number of belts you put in, so one belt times 26 output Z. And that works for this one as well. You get 40 belts on a blue belt, or 40 items on a blue belt, and 13 items again rounded down on a yellow belt. So whichever belt you're reading, it outputs the number of items per second in a Z signal. So this one right now is 26, which then goes back over to this machine, where we have our I times 10 and our Z of 26. And we take I and divide it by Z to get the percentage out of 100 of the items per second. And then we feed it into this machine over here. This machine over here is also getting that R signal, so the R signal is what's telling it every second to blink. You can see it there blinking. As long as R equals 1, it outputs its input count. So every time you get that one tick of R through here, it sends its signal through. And then that R signal also comes in here so that when R is greater than 2, it outputs its input count. So basically what's happening here is this R gets passed into this machine and out the other side. But it also gets passed into this machine at the same moment. But then one tick later, this machine puts out its R signal. So then this machine has two R's and it shuts off. So that gives you um, a memory cell. It locks that last value in place. And you can see that there in the output signals that every time R hits two, it grabs that output signal and just locks it there until it hits R equals two again. And then over here, we have our S signals. So this S times one equals S outputs just the S signals. So you never get any signal mix up here. And then the lights are pretty easy. S greater than negative one. So anything will have this bottom row lit and then S greater than zero, S greater than one, etc., all the way up to S greater than nine or 10, because we should never get a signal of more than 10, because that means we've got a full belt if we get 100%, which is 10. Um, then when the signal passes through there, it comes back down here for some quick coloration. This is something that I added on to this blueprint a while back. Um, basically what it says is, is if S is less than four, so three, two, one, or zero, uh, output a red signal. And so you can see there, it was only three, so it put out a red signal. And then when S is greater than three, put out a yellow signal. So when S, S pumps up here to three, it turns yellow. And the whole line is yellow as it gets passed down. And then we go over to the last one here. S is greater than six equals green. And because, let me pop over there. Oh, right, it's not in there. So if we go in here to the signals, because green is earlier in the sequence than yellow, the green will override it. So you don't have to worry about any complicated math here to say if uh, S is greater than three or less than six output yellow because the green will override it as soon as it hits six. So that's how we got the color coordination here. Um, and again, this is a very spread out version so you can see it. When you actually get this blueprint, you just place it down and I'm gonna have to give it a little bit of power, I think. Actually, no, it's already in the power lane. So. If we hook this up to a belt, and I'm just gonna run this over here like this so that I can just take off the same belt there. You'll see it's just kind of blinking at me. And that, again, is because you have to reset it. So if you turn the reset on for a second and then turn it back off, now your graph should work correctly. Although it looks like I didn't place a light there. There we go. Well, I think we've pretty much covered everything there is to cover on this blueprint. Uh, feel free to use it in any of your worlds, and uh, if you want to share those with me, you are always welcome to put them down in the comments along with any feedback or questions. Um, I may do some more circuitry videos like this if anybody has requests that they would like to see done, so uh, make sure to put those in the comments as well. And let me know if you enjoyed this. Leave a like, because I don't make videos if people don't enjoy them, so, you know. Uh, leave your feedback down below and I'll see you guys again soon.